All right. I'm not sure if this camera's going or not, but hopefully it is. Anyhow. Today, what we're doing is spraying some nematodes. Now, my birds over there, they're throwing a little bit of a fit because, um, well, they want to come out, but uh, we usually let them out at noon. But on rainy days, there's the pressure of, ne of uh, predators, so they have to... Uh, Stay locked up on some days. Not always. It's a rare occasion. So they're a little excited thinking I'm going to let them out. Now what I got here is three different kinds of nematodes. Uh, some of them are for different uh, creatures. Um, We sort of get all three different kinds because uh, of the different uses. Some of the uses are for root knot nematodes, and if you're gardening in Florida, that's something that you're very aware of. And uh, there's also fleas and ants beetles, grasshoppers. Um, these all help control the population on these. So I'm taking a tablespoon of each kind and I bought a separate pump up sprayer because my other pump up sprayers had uh, had uh, different chemicals in it. Not necessarily even chemicals but organic organic pesticides and such and I wanted to make sure that uh, I was going to use something that was not going to kill the nematodes obviously uh, I actually have marked this one I we were at uh, tractor supply and uh, this tank costed $14.99 Now, they recommend using a hose-in sprayer, and the reason why I chose against that for this application is, um, well, it's sort of a pain in the butt carrying around a hose, and it also limits your flexibility um, to get around the yard. Uh, each packet was supposed to uh, treat an acre, and I have uh, five acres here. Um, so in other words, I have three acres worth of product. Now, uh, not all acreage here is thoroughly being used by us, so we are going to... Uh, take care of the places that we use most and come back and refill frequently. Um, but we, yeah, we do have a lot of coverage to get to. Now, on a day like today, uh, is perfect because they like wet soils and the rain and such uh, helps the creatures move about in the soils and uh, I'm going along this line because I know that there are ants in here and uh, not really a location spray but a general area There's not a lot of uh, information on the internet about nematodes. As a matter of fact, it sort of reminds me of, uh, in the old days, the uh, 
sea monkeys or something some little creatures they were actually brian shrimp i think that you don't really see you don't know if they're really there that kind of thing this is my third time using nematodes and i can tell you i definitely noticed a drop in fleas ants biting creatures Uh, you want to be spraying soil. This is not like a direct application. You don't want to be spraying directly onto your leaves and such of your trees for this type of thing because uh, that's not what it's for. It's a soil living organiz organism, so you want to get it in the soil. And by no means, I'm no expert on nematodes. I, it's just one of those things that I bring up many times that people are talking about fleas for their pets and so forth and uh, biting insects and what they could do organically and uh, I've tried it a few times it's very very expensive but if you start thinking about the cost of say something to take care of beetles and something to take care of root knot and something to take care of ants all those different types of uh, chemicals within a year's time you might wind up spending the same sorts of money i'm sort of eyeing for some ant areas Like I said, um, my goal personally is not to get every inch, just curious what that was, I don't know what it is, of the property, but to get the creatures down so they can find their way about on their own. Now they say that this is okay for chickens and uh, uh, dogs and cats it really is something that just uh, I guess it it gets inside the host insect and eats it from the inside out or it lays eggs in there I'm not sure what the process is but it's a small bacteria sized creature And I don't recommend things that I don't think believe I don't believe works. So I do not believe this one is a hocus pocus. I'm just sort of going around the garden. Uh, you may notice that my grass is really tall. Now, we just recently installed bees and we're a little concerned that nothing, nothing was blooming. And here's the other thing. I'm not, you can see by my grass here that I'm not a fan of lawns to begin with. Uh, if it's green, it's good. And diverse items for the the chickens and so forth uh, I'm not gonna waste my time trying to now don't get me wrong I add rice seed and I've thrown out some some flower seeds here and there but that's Oh, my guy's leaking. Tighten that up. And like I say, I try and, yeah, the whole property. I, I do want to get the whole property. I got several trips to make with this. And this is probably going to be a very boring video if I uh, continue to just spray 
my garden. And yes, I have weeds. I'm not... This is real life here. Not Nothing staged. Right now I'm out at work with the COVID-19 layoff, furlough. The world's at odds right now. For those of you growing in Florida, I found that these grow bags work pretty well. It's kind of weird. And they get, oh yeah, I remember now. I threw some kitchen compost out here. Haven't had much luck growing corn or tomatoes, which are some of our favorite vegetables here in Florida, but we'll keep trying. Like I say, I'm spraying the ground, not really the uh, plants. Ooh, eggplant got a bloom. Now, uh, this particular manufacturer didn't leave uh, uh, the, the directions are left to the imagination quite a bit. You know, they said to add a tablespoon of stuff per each area that you're going to spray or, or something to that effect. <coughs> uh, in the past, I've used other brands that have told you to mix in a bucket and uh you know dip your hose and sprayer into that bucket and then spray around type of deal well this particular package said that the the nematodes are not aquatic so that leaves me to question and that they shouldn't be in water for more than two hours so that's why I decided to put a tablespoon in a pump-up sprayer and, huh, I guess I didn't put this together well enough. I am by no means an expert, I've just like I said, I've used a product a few times, and um, it's always something that people are unaware of, it seems like, right now. I don't know if that'll help with the hornworms, but it says, basically, the, the nematodes are supposed to help with any, anything that has a underground... Uh, period, you know, where there's pupa in the ground, uh, worms or whatnot in the ground. So, boy, I gotta pull that out and throw it out. And yes, I need to weed out here and keep up with it a little better. And it does seem to take a while to empty out a sprayer. <laughs> Stuff has no smell. It's not what it's about. It's not really a poison. It, like I said, it's just some little bacteria that infects. I guess it's like COVID-19 for bugs, huh? <laughs> Worms, specifically worms. I'll go ahead and spray around these because The 
plant some squashes and watermelons around so we all know how them squash bugs are don't know if they have a worm like beginning or not but if they do Yeah, we don't have our uh, electric fence electri electrified right now. We might have to in the future, but um, right now it just keeps chickens out. Over in here is, uh, wow, look at the thorns on that. Whew. This is our citrus. And I've noticed some um, squash bugs, or not, I don't know if they're squash bugs, but they're little black bugs with red or orange stripes on them the other day. And I came out here with the, the neem, neem oil and sprayed them. So I don't know if this will help with that situation or not, but we're gonna try it. As you can see, we had this uh, orchard area done beautifully with perfect little donuts and so forth. My husband shoveled them and raked them out and we give chickens access to the area so they do their own landscaping and really there's not much you can do about that. But I think that the trees and plants are better off because of it. They get over here and they're they're always digging for any kind of bugs, beetles, whatnot, and uh, so, and then they're leaving their fertilizer behind in the process. So I I I think it's all part of the system. This stuff that looks like garbage on the ground, I I use cardboard underneath my mulch to uh, mulch the trees and so forth. And I know that I'm gonna have a certain amount of that around. I try not to be too disturbed about it. Some folks like to uh, say that because it's got ink on it or whatever, that it's not good for the land or the food process and this and that, but I think that it's already been wasted, it's already been used and letting it go to the dump without thoroughly incorporating it back into the land I think is just not right either. So I'm um, more about common sense sustainability than I am about um, excess purity because you're not gonna get pure. Uh, if you do, it'll be extremely expensive. This was just a little guy last year, and he froze all the way down to the ground, and he's coming back. I think he's going to be fine. It's actually his second year in. Some figs going on.
Yeah, like I said, we need to mow the grass, but. Right now, it's sort of a deliberate action to, uh, welcome the newbies in. Uh, because we have, so you can see some of the flowers on the ground and so forth. Uh, and I don't have a lot of ornamental. I've been sticking to uh, food, food, edible landscaping and not really thinking about the pollinators too much. So that's something I'll have to start working on. Boy, this thing just keeps us spraying and us spraying. It's gonna take a while to get through all this. I'm guessing three or four jugs worth it get me through everything. One thing I've noticed is uh, on Facebook, everybody's been uh, posting pictures of uh, the black lopper uh, grasshoppers and so forth. I have to say, my problems with those have pretty much gone away. I don't know if it's related to the nematodes or if it's related to the chickens or related to both, but rarely up front where I don't normally spray. This year I'm going to spray, but I don't normally spray up front. Uh, there is... There are some grasshoppers and more ants and things of that nature. So I, I, I seem to think that it has to do with the spraying. This poor key lime has really gone all the way back, died all the way back down to the bottom. I don't think that he's ever going to make it here. I always like to push the zone a little bit. These here, sort of reckless planting, I bought them and put them in here. They are uh, muscadine grapes. And over here is a, uh, a passion vine. Over here, another muscadine grape. As you can see, going a little wild. I'm going to have to get in here and tell them where to go. Go ahead and hit up the greenhouse, the green shade house thing that we need to re rebuild. Yeah, like I said, this is more of a soil type thing, so I'm just going to spray my pots. We got more fig trees here to plant. random cuttings of stuff and the moss stuff really likes to take over in here. Yeah, the weeds just want to grow wild in here. Alright, so that area over there, you can see how the weeds are growing tall. We definitely need to mow it soon, and once I do, I'll have to videotape that so it's all looking pretty again. 
this here is a pomegranate. It's looking good. It's an olive tree. This right here is some crazy wisteria that keeps growing back into everything. Um, we got it all over our yard. It's one of those struggles uh, left. And all this stuff popping up all over the place is cardinal vine. Somebody thought it was pretty. It's pretty evasive. And you can see it, it's just all over. It's all the way throughout our property. So, it's one of those things. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, I guess. So I'm gonna spray around up here up front because it's where we hang out. See the wisteria all through the yard, all over the place. We are nearing the end of this jug and I'm not going to videotape any more after this jug. I'm going to go ahead and continue spraying the property because I'm sure this is boring enough as it is. And like I said, th again, it's a perfect... Uh, scenario the rain and so forth to be spraying stuff like this or you'd have to water it in afterwards now i'm anticipating more rain today if not then i will uh, sprinkle turn the sprinklers on and such throughout the property Yeah, I'll, I'll directly spray in the chicken coop in case y'all were wondering about that. Um, later on, if we happen to let them out today. You see the ginger starting to come up, seeing a lot of the red roots and so forth. Just walked into a spider web. It's my little ginger garden. The chickens have been at work in here. Some blueberry.
Okay, I think that's it for this recording.